April 26, a seemingly typical day, or so I thought, until Ida B. Cheatham came screaming into my office, going on and on about some dead teacher. Dead. I thought I heard her right, but I asked her again anyway. Dead? Dead. I knew then that this day was going to get interesting. Just another day in the life of Guy Noir, Private Eye. I calmed Ida down enough to take me to the scene of the crime. Turns out the crazy broad was right. It was Mueller. Fred Mueller. Calculus teacher extraordinaire. Ida had gone in for tutorials during A4 and found the door locked. Mr. Mueller was asleep at his desk and Ida's knocking didn't wake him. She found a janitor to unlock the door. Boy was she surprised when she found out Mr. Mueller wasn't asleep. He was dead. And that's how she came to me. Sad. Alone. Hysterical. I began to investigate. I looked at the surveillance video and found that three students had entered the room alone earlier today a prerequisite for committing any crime. Lee, DeFiore, and Place. I called each of them in for interrogation and got right down to the point. I knew Lee was angry that she didn't get the highest score on the last test. She didn't deny it either. Her indifference toward Mueller's death was disturbing. I asked why she had gone into the room, and she said it was to argue that the half point she missed on the test was a mistake, but found Mueller asleep and promptly left. Asleep? I asked. She said that he had graded the calculus test the previous night. The test grades were overall, well, poor, needless to say, and Mueller had a little too much scotch. This case was starting to get complicated. De Fiore. Now there's a suspect. She had been touchy about her poor score on the practice AP calculus exam for the past week. But was that enough to murder Mueller? I was determined to find out. She was oddly cheerful when she came in. Smiles and pleasantries isn't something a private investigator should expect. I saw right through her facade. She claimed that she was over her score. Didn't care at all. And she made a point to say that she was deeply sorry Mueller had died said he was a wonderful teacher. I asked why she had gone to Mueller's room, and she said she only wanted to stop by and say hello, but she also found Mueller asleep and left. Place was expressionless, suspicious, an investigator's worst nightmare. Couldn't get anything out of him. All I found out was that he was turning in his homework. I asked why. It was the day after the test. Homework is due the day of the test. He looked at me with a blank stare. No one turns homework in on time. I knew this to be true. He said he was in too much of a hurry to notice Mueller. Place put his work in the tray and left without even looking to see if he was in the room. The suspects didn't lead me anywhere. I knew I had to resort to other techniques. When I awoke, I wasn't in my most dignified position. I knew then that mysterious gas must be the cause of death. I decided to check the mysterious gas detector located in the back of the room. As part of the recent renovations at Denton High School, pipes had been installed leading from the ceiling, where the gas was stored in a tank, to the science labs, and mysterious gas detectors had been installed in all of the classrooms of the pipes passed through. The detectors displayed both the maximum gas concentration percentage and the time at which the percentage has been registered. 72.36% at 2.55 p.m. I knew then that I had to use calculus, logistics to be specific. The gas reacted with oxygen exponentially until it reached a carrying capacity, at which time it ran out of oxygen to react with. I started by finding the total volume of the room, 5,355 cubic feet. I used the gas concentration of 72.36% to find the volume of the gas in the room, which was 3,874.878 cubic feet. 
I then inserted these values into the simple logistics formula, p equals L over 1 plus e to the negative t, where p is the volume of gas, L is the carrying capacity and the volume of the room, and t is the time in hours since the gas volume was at half the carrying capacity, or L over 2. Using the new equation I saw for t, I found that 0.962 hours had passed since the gas volume had reached half its carrying capacity. Because the upper and lower limits of the logistics function never actually reached their limits, I looked at the graph to find the approximate time at which the gas volume equaled zero. This time was t equals negative 3.538. I added the time that the gas volume was near zero to the time that the gas detector registered the highest gas concentration. I then knew that the gas leak started four and a half hours from the time the gas detector had registered the highest concentration, meaning that the leak started at 1027 AM. I matched the time that the leak had started with the surveillance video to find out who committed the crime. I speculated as I searched through the video to the corresponding time. Was it Lee, with her unhealthy obsession about her nearly perfect grades, or Di Fiore? embarrassed by her poor performance and stressed about the impending AP test. Maybe Place, with his nonchalant attitude toward homework and his teacher. It was too washy, but the video told all. Di Fiore. Turns out she was still quite upset about her practice score, and she hadn't stopped by to just say hello after all. She went to Mueller's room and found him asleep, and in a fit of revenge broke the pipeline. It was rash, but then again, times can get stressful during AP exam season. Homicides go through the roof. After all, at Denton High School, even AP students carry knives. Case closed. Another day in the life of Guy Noir, Private Eye.